Hey, welcome back. This is Cheshire and I'm a bit tired and I might be a little bit hungover and last night at the media pre-release I might have had one too many fireball shots. Fireball is a very delicious hot whiskey. Uh, it's not hot, it's spicy. It's spicy. It's got like cinnamon in it and it's uh, it's really good and they had like liquid gold in it as well to make it very um and kept related which is fantastic. Uh, today, what have we got? We have one Magic the Gathering I'm in Cat Deck Builders Kit. Whatever. Uh, but we do have a bundle to open as well. Um, and these these bundles are always my favourite things to open. We'll uh, we'll start turning into it. Let me just make sure I've got chat up so that I can see what's going on in the chat. All right. And hello to everyone in chat. Will. Everyone in chat, it's nice to see you. Uh, let's chuck this down here now. My camera is going to wobble a bit because I've got it precariously set up at the moment on a light rigging uh, because I left my tripod over at Board Games of Brewskies. Terrible, I know, but what you going to do? Oh, alright, alright. Ah, there we go. Ah, ah. Uh, I hope you can see that actually. I will switch over just to make sure that you can. But, um. So, the usual triptych, uh, if that's what you want to call it, fold out uh, the long landscape view. Uh, of course, as usual, you get your player's guide. Player's guide. Same as always, really. Uh, talks about some of the cards and stuff. The weird little dice box. Does anyone actually have we figured out what this is yet? Because um, I don't think I have. Hey, Albie, it's good to see you, buddy. Thanks for coming in. Um, the civilization, the mechanics, huh? The extra piece of paper. Um, mm. That's not our cold, no. That's sarsaparilla. Because here in Australia, our, our, our sarsaparilla is fancy. Um, we've seen those books before. Do we really care about them? So the box itself, you would have seen this on Wizard's site. It's got the, uh, the weed cut again, which I think they'll be doing for everything, to be honest. Um, oh, there is something actually I wanted to point out about this. I can find it. So everyone's going Burko over those premium full art lands, and as you should. But uh, in boosters, you can get normal lands and full art lands. I know how that sounds, and I don't know why they did it that way. Um, but in some boosters, you will crack a premium full art land, which is not even foil, it's just a full art land. Uh, and in other boosters, you're going to crack like normal lands, normal basic lands. Uh, the thing to point out on these, uh, I think the deck builder has 25, but these have like 20 full art lands in them. Uh, 80 card basic land pack includes 20 full art basic lands. So, there's your myth dispelled about that one. Uh, thank you very much for the auto hosts, Silicary, MP Numbers, MTG Stream, Retronical. Alright, ah! Sorry, sorry, that's not my fault, I swear. Totally my fault. Um, Alright, so the big thing here is double sided tokens. I kid you not. Yes. It's funny because you usually come across people that say that buying yourself a bundle is not worth it, and technically speaking, usually then they're not great, but when you're getting all of these double-sided bloody tokens <laughs> you make me a very happy man because tokens is one thing that we need more of and that we don't have um i'll just quickly flick through them i don't want to sit here and be all like i'll mention every single one um because that's obviously crazy let me just have a look there i am right uh all right an angel with a drake that's pretty cool uh, I think there's probably going to be at least one 
of every single uh, heart piercer. Hello. <laughs> one of, uh, at least one of every single creature, if not more. Drakes, we saw Drakes before. That was on an anointed priest. This one's on an angel of sanctions. Some insects, some zombies, beasts. Hippo, I could have used that last night. Uh, mouth to feed. Um, and, oh, there is Planeswalker token as well. So the, your big question is going to be two things. The first one is, how did I get product early? Uh, I am media. I am a YouTuber and a streamer, as you can see here. Um, and that's luckily how I managed to get this early. Uh, because last night was the media pre-pre-release. Yeah, don't even know where my borders are. Uh, so I actually got to go in and play with the set early, and I can tell you right now, this is shaping up to be my favourite set. Um, whoa, don't crush those lands, Al. I haven't eaten yet. Um, I have showered, but I'm quite hungry. But I thought that I needed to do this before I left the house for food. Um, Lands, 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 all these basic lands, which is great because they will come in handy for drafting bad on May 6th, where six of us get together and we draft Amonkhet uh, live on this particular channel on May 6th. See what I did there? Chuck that in. Let's get to the full out lands. All right. Normal lands, full out lands. Get your swamps and your mountains and your forests and your plains and your islands. Interesting. Um, they're not s separately packaged from the basic lands, either from the normal basic lands. So that's something to think about uh, when you decide that you want to get one of these bundles uh, as an investment, as some people do for some reason. Hey, you, you, your full out lands are now going to be worth anything? Come on. Because um, they're going to keep printing them in future, let's face it. Do we want to get into boost packs now? Uh, I probably should switch back to the chat. Terrific. Double-sided tokens is a nice addition. It's a very nice addition. I am pleasantly surprised. Alright. Let's start busting into packs. I'm going to switch back over to this. Probably should have just actually changed my chat a little bit. Again, not really awake to be honest. Probably should have slept in a bit more. Now uh, let's move those just to the side because we know that that's a border there. And that's a border there. Alright, cool. Um, I don't think I need to necessarily go through the commons. Um, I don't think anyone here really cares that much about commons. Oh, goodness. I'm trying to figure out which one's which. Hang on a second, what have I done? Alright, yep, cool. Okay. For a second there I was like, did I miss the uncommons somehow? Um, but no, it's fine. Uh, so we've got Hypatra's Mark. We have Edifice of Authority. We've got Spring to Mind, uh, which is actually really cool. Bit expensive to be honest. Uh, we have Regal Caracal, which is the Cat Lord. Yay! Cat Lord, Cat Lord, what you gonna do? Um, terrible. Uh, and our foil is an ordinary Kudo and full art planes. So I can't complain about that. So, how's everyone's day been? Uh, obviously, mine has pretty much only just started. Got up, had a shower, prepared the stream. Uh, didn't really do much, to be honest. Get rid of those booster packs. Hey, it's my favourite card, Fling! Uh, and if you haven't yet read my article on Red Deck Wins, you should probably go and do that. Uh, one, two, three, four. That is up on YouTube at the moment. That's my first video series, Deck Tech, that I probably will not look to do again, because it was... I, I don't do deck text. Uh, I do it written form, not oral, because 
I just don't. I've never been good at that kind of stuff. Um, I'm much better at writing. So we've got True Heart Twins, uh, Cryptic Serpent, Trial of Solidarity, and Channel Initiate, uh, which I actually had in my pre-release deck last night, and it was really good. Basic land and token. Um, the Initiate was real good. Like, a real good. Especially when you've got combat tricks and stuff. Hey, Duba, thanks for the auto host, buddy. Um, when you've got combat tricks to get you out of tight situations and stuff as well, um, really starts to make sense. Let's go all the way back. Tell you what, my blind eyes have a very, very hard time trying to figure out where the uncommons are. True Heart Twins, another Cryptic Serpent, Gale's Strike, and, ooh, Heart Piercer Manicore, hello. That is, in my honest opinion, one of the best rares in this set. Because uh, it strikes me way back to the land of uh, Flame Tongue Carvu. If you ever played with Flame Tongue Carvu, it was, uh, I think, something like four mana came into play and dealed four damage to target creature, from memory. Um, but, yeah, it was really good. Uh, and obviously, Heart Piece of Manicor is very much because of Embalm and stuff like that as well. It's very much on par with uh, that kind of scary power level. Go back, go back, go back. There we go. Okay, Faith of the Devoted, Limits of Solidarity, Uncropped Champion, and Fetid Bulls. Because Lord knows I need more cycling lands. I pulled a whole heap last night, it was hilarious. Eric Bambi, thank you very much for the follow. Much love. Alright, come on. Show me something spicy. Stream wants to see spicy. I think it's finding money here is not an uncommon. Uh, so, time to reflect on my life choices. <laughs> Trail of Knowledge. Deem Worthy. Uh, which is interesting, and I'll get to that in just a second. Fallout Island. Pity these aren't double-sided, to be honest. Why didn't they just put these in the pack double-sided? Uh, Oracle's Vault. So Oracle's Vault is... Chew and tap, exile the top card of your library. Till end of turn, you may play that card. Um, put a brick counter on the vault. Exile the top card of your library. Secondary ability. Uh, until end of turn, you may play that card without paying its mana cost. Activate this ability only if there are three or more brick counters on Oracle's Vault. The cool thing about these vaults is I'm pretty sure none of them require you to actually take the counters back off. Um, Deem Worthy. Now, here's the thing, right? So, Deem Worthy deals seven damage to target creature. It's obvious that uh, maybe, maybe this guy has been deemed worthy for the god to kill him. I don't know. Ali MTG, thank you so much for the follow, buddy. Um, how did the cartouches end up playing out last night? Did people just get two for one to often, or did they play well in your matches? Um, I only played, I think, one cartouche, and it was the green one. Um, I think, from memory. One green, two colors, gives plus one, plus one, and trample and fights. Um, because that was really good just for removal itself. Uh, other than that, I didn't see a lot of people playing the cartouches in sealed. Um, but half of those people you've got to remember, well, most of them are media, um, and half of them don't play all the time. Um, so I would put that down to not a big enough sizing sample to know, um, depending on power level of the actual players themselves. So the cartouches could end up being really good. Um, I think that in standard, some of those cartouches are going to end up being really good. Um, but I didn't see them impact enough uh, in sealed. A couple of people played the black one, saying that that was really good, but just didn't seem good enough to me. And I could be wrong, but we will see. So we've got Gate to the Afterlife. Now, here's the thing, right? So Gate to the Afterlife says... Um, We'll just skip to the secondary ability. Two tap, sacrifice, a gate, search a graveyard, a hand, and a library for a card named God Pharaoh's Gift. Now, God Pharaoh's Gift isn't in this set. 
just wanted to say that because that makes me annoyed. Uh, Flame Blade Adept, Defiant Great Maw, and ooh, Bunchu the Glorified, Menace Indestructible God for six. Bunchu the Glorified can't attack or block unless a creature died under your control this turn. One black, one colorless, sacrifice another creature, scry one, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. For three mana, that's pretty good. This is going to be EDH playable for sure. Uh, and our foil is an uncommon Seraph of the Suns, flying indestructible for four, for seven. Uh, which, surprisingly enough, did see a lot of play last night. Uh, which was pretty surprising if you ask me. But, whatever. Alright, so... Where are we here? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Stop from there. So we've got Trial of Strength. We have Ruthless... What? Ruthless Sniper. Gotta remember where my hands are. We've got Reduced to Rubble. And we've got Pyramid of the Pantheon. So it is one colorless artifact, two tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, put a brick counter on Pyramid of the Pantheon, tap, add three mana to your mana pool, activate this only if there are three or more brick counters on the Pyramid of the Pantheon. Pretty, pretty sweet, bit slow, can see it being played in Commander maybe, um, but even for Commander it might be a bit too slow. There is a control deck that it works really well in, um, but I am not the person who's smart enough to tell you all the ins and outs of that particular control deck, uh, but I do believe it has a really good place in the format itself. Uh, really terrible at judging where these uncommons are at this time, which is fine. Uh, protection of Hekma, cast out. Blood Rage Brawler, and our rare is Approach of the Second Sun. You bet I'm going to be building a deck around this. Six colors, one white sorcery. If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand, and you've cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. Otherwise, put Approach of the Second Sun into its owner's library, seventh from the top, and you gain seven life. Um, the main thing to remember here is it's all about casting. All about casting. Um, so please bear that in mind, because I know that there are some people who are talking about, oh, well, I'm gonna, just going to, like, fork it or something, but if the card doesn't say that you cast that second copy, ain't going to work. Right. Okay. Kefnet's, Kef, Kefnet? Kefnet's Monument? I'm so bad with names today. Uh, Scaled Behemoth. Renewed Faith, which is a story card, which is why you can see this here. And then we've got Prepare to Fight. So, first part of the card is white and a one. Untapped target creature and it gets plus two, plus two, and lifelink until the end of turn. Then it, Aftermath, so it's in your graveyard, you can pay green and three colorless. Target creature you control, ta fights target creature and opponent controls. Um... Probably not going to see a whole lot of uh, constructive play, but uh, definitely should see some play within uh, Sealed for sure. We've got Electrify as our foil, which is red and three, deals four damage to target creature, it's an instant. And another Full Art Land. So Full Art Land's in abundance, and that is the main thing that I wanted people to remember is that uh, it's, it's in abundance. These Full Art Lands... You just get so many of them. Okay. So, we got Labyrinth Guardian. We have Synchronized Strike. Shadowstorm Vizier. And Vizier of Many Faces. Cool. So, two blue, two colorless. Shapeshifter Cleric. You may have Vizier of Many Faces into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Um, except if Vizier of Many Faces was embalmed. The token has no mana cost. It's white. And it's a zombie in addition to its other types. 
and Balm is three colours and two blue. Really solid. Just really solid. Good to be able to like uh, clone stuff. Uh, and great with Embalm. Embalm is such a really good design space to be exploring. Um, especially meaning that your creature is going to be able to come back at some stage if it gets killed. I think that that's a really nice touch. Arr! Discover the world of Magic the Gathering by Mark Rosewater. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we've seen enough of, of those from these deck builder toolkits. Now, here's the portion where I start to complain. For boosters. Weird piece of cardboard for no reason. Okay. Now, this is, uh, this is, thank you to Double Jump Communications and Wizards of the Coast, uh, is the reason why I got this product, uh, so that I can open it up. But that means I can say whatever I want still. Um, I am still held to my own beliefs. Uh, and they did also give me uh, a starter deck, um, but I also have Diyoshi's starter deck as well, so I'm going to be going down to an NLG later today to stream some uh, games of those Planeswalker decks. But the Deck Builders Toolkit, in my opinion, is outdated. Uh, Bronson190, thank you so much for the follow. Good to see you. Um, the reason being that I think that this is way outdated is because of the cards that are used for the Deck Builders Toolkit. Um, if I was a new player and I got this, I'd be like, Hey, look at all my new cards! And then, once I started actually playing and realised that it just feels like it's not really worth it. Unless you crack something really good out of the boosters. And that can happen. And that's fine. But, no. Um, you get one of these big things on how to build your deck and stuff. We don't care about that. Uh, okay, so we got heaps of little packs of lands and stuff here. Huh, Evolving Wilds is in the set. Sure, that's what everyone says. Now, you get four boosters. So, Avancat, Oath of the Gatewatch, Kaladesh, Aether Revolt. Oath of the Gatewatch. But just... To be honest, could have just been another booster for Avancat and... If I was a new player, I would have been happy, um, considering. The other thing that you've got to kind of start taking into question is that um, if these toolkits were put together before the change to the standard rotation, does that mean that they knew that this is potentially going to be rotating out? I'm fairly sure it was. Um, yeah. Anyway. That's just my gripe with it. Um, and some of the cards contained herein, which we will be going through. Alright. Can we see that? Yep. Meandering River. Prophet of Distortion. Varon Flames. Oath of Gideon. Goblin Freerunner. Full Out Forest. And Zombie Token. What's next? Uh, Kaladesh or Aether Revolt? I think it was Kaladesh. Doesn't really matter, I guess, but... Eh. Hey, thanks for the follow that just went up and disappeared straight away. Pray for foil mythics. Um, last night, I saw two foil Gideon promos being opened in pre-release packs. So, uh, Derek, and I know you're going to watch this because Derek is my graphic design guy. That's for you. <laughs> Same with you, Carl. Uh, it was great to see... Um, there was a lot of really good stuff open last night, um, and people were fairly happy. Why is it upside down? Upside down, upside down. Oh, okay, two of them are upside down. Sure. So, Contraband Kingpin, Wisp Weaver Angel, Veteran Murderist, and Electrostatic Pummel. Look, I'm not going to complain. Electrostatic Pummel. Um... Although last night I did pull an Oketri, the, the white god, uh, in foil, so that was pretty cool. Whoops. We're going to save that one for last. 
opening the wrong booster pack at the wrong time. See, I find that the design, when it comes to the set marker on these ones, so much easier to understand than the Amun Ket because the pyramid has a white side, and I keep thinking it's a silver side. Uh, Outland Boar, Aerial Modification, Maverick Flopterist, Carry Zev's Expertise. Yeah, it's alright. It's not a terrible booster, could have been worse. Oh boy. Okay. So, last booster pack from this deck ball list toolkit Trial of Ambition, Renewed Faith, Grave Digger, Liliana Death's Majesty. Hello, my bae. Uh, and our foil is a sacred cat. Yay, foil cat. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, and Island. Liliana. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, now, I don't think we really need me to open these. Uh, I guess in the interest of fairness, we probably should, shouldn't we? If my eyes could get there. At the gate, which is so confusing to have in there, they are doing the last four sets. It would be Eldritch Moon. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's why I don't really understand the whole like. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to me of why you would do that because, I mean, the deck builders toolkit is supposed to be for new people. Why why isn't it Eldritch Moon? You know, <laughs> Eldritch Moon had a lot of really good stuff in it. Liliana, for example. Um, but it had a lot of really solid cards, and I guess maybe it's because of the way that the sets are built, they thought that that was the least impactful when it came to new mechanics, but that doesn't make sense because of Devoid. <laughs> hey Transcendent, yes, uh, this is pretty much just all Magic the Gathering content creators just hanging out and watching me crack packs, <laughs> pretty much. Um... Alright, so with these, and I just want to kind of cycle through them now. As you can see here, there is a mix of Amonkhet and some older sets um, as well. Obviously not too old. Uh, great for some, getting some uncommons and stuff. This is why I've always said that tool, toolkits have generally been alright, because you're getting a mix of the last couple of sets. Yeah, okay, yeah. This is pretty good. Um, but in saying that, they're not the greatest of value, because, <sighs> well, why? 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 Every single deck builder's toolkit. How many of these victories, Herald, now exist in the world? I don't understand. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I just, ah, uh, I'm so passionate about it. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh where? Yeah, well that that was interesting. Off the camera. Sorry. It's on the touch lamp at the moment. Um, just wanted to show this is what you get, or part of what you get from completing five trials. This gorgeous die. And most people have probably already seen this, but it's just gorgeous. Something to bear in mind. Um so Victory's Herald. Sphinx of Magosi, Nightmare, Shivan Dragon, Garrix, <coughs> Hood, Sarah Angel. Like, why? They, this 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 block should not exist. It should not be in here, and it's terrible. Um, other than that, there's another 2017 base card. What they're calling 2017. I just don't understand why they put them in. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. So you've got the same assortment of like, you know, just random couple of vehicles and stuff. Things to help new players. Um, this will be the important one. Again, remembering that the basic lands aren't split uh, aside from the full arts. At least it's not Angus's Angel. Yes, well, okay, that's true, but still. 
Oh, that's where the flat lands are. Right. Okay. Uh, so. Can you see those? Yep. Cool. So we've got some sanctuaries and stuff um, that have been reprinted. Which is cool, because it means that your lands have, like, tap, slow lands, whatever you want to call them, tap lands, um, are back in, regardless. Because they've all got the Alan Cat printing on them. The big thing here, though, uh, is that you get more flat lands. Now, usually I would say this is great. This is fantastic. This makes me really happy. We're going to open these because basic lands, who cares? We'll use those in a drafting bad on May 6th when we get six people together to do a three round drafting tournament. Um, these lands, although stunning, if I can get them out of boosters, I'm not going to be buying a toolkit to go, oh well, that's, that's an extra for that toolkit that I want. Um, that's just not going to happen. So, what do I think about the toolkit? It's it's a bogus product. Um, bundles are great. The fact that they're now 10 boosters is great. Um, deck builders, toolkits. If you're a new player, please just hit up your store uh, or, or somebody you know for some trash cards that they don't want, they can't get rid of. Buy some bulk. Uh, it's pretty easy to find somebody like me or uh, not even a content creator, but like somebody who drafts a lot, who has a lot of draft fodder that you can buy with them, commons and uncommons. Please, new players, just do it that way. Don't buy into a, a deck builder's toolkit. You'll be sadly disappointed, especially with the four boosters. Spend your money on boosters if you need to. Uh, I would suggest that you learn how to draft and just go and draft. Seriously. Um, when it comes to lands, you, you're you going to be buying Planeswalker decks anyway. I know I do. Every time, every set, I buy intro slash Planeswalker decks, which a lot of people are like, ah, oh, they're underpowered and they shit. They're great for teaching new people. They're great to play against new people, and that's what I would suggest. A lot of stores now do leagues. Do a league. Do a league. Uh, they do, like, sealed leagues, planeswalker leagues, stuff like that. Um, but they're definitely well worth it. Go and support your friendly local game store. Um, buy a sealed product, and that's fine. You, your friendly local game store doesn't really make that much money off sealed product. Trust me, I know from experience. Um... But I think one of the big things that you can do is buy singles from your friendly local game store. Now, don't get me wrong, I love places like Card Kingdom, but I'm not in America, and I don't have to say that you should exclusively use them. They have fast shipping and stuff, don't get me wrong, they don't support this channel at all, um, and I really, I've even bought from them in the past, and I can tell you now, they're really quick. But also support your friendly local game store. If it's newer standard stuff you're into, Go and buy it at your FLGS. Otherwise, if it's older stuff, sure, go online. Um, find somebody who can actually sell you that stock. Those those different things. Um, wow, we just opened a whole bunch of boosters. I only got was this stinking shirt. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so other than that, I'm in Cat so far feels really good. Um, the pre-pre-release that we did last night was fun. The set flowed really well. Um, the main thing that I found with the set was it wasn't as straightforward as other sets have been in terms of what you should be putting in your deck. Because there's so much going on with uh, Exert, Embalm, Cycling, all that sort of stuff. Minus one, minus one counters all over the place. Um, so that's something else to take into consideration is get yourself familiar with the set first. Uh, because this set, it will be the set that makes you wonder a little bit about your life choices and, and how you should be building your decks um, because it is a little bit different. So get to know this set as much as possible before you go out uh, to the pre-release this weekend. Um, that of course starts midnight Friday night. Um, I will be going myself to a midnight pre-release. I don't know if I'm going to be putting up content. Um, I am going in to play some Planeswalker decks with the the store owner today so I maybe just have a chat with him um, especially considering it's not my sponsor which makes me feel a little bit nervous uh, but I will try and get at least some sort of more more newer content brain work more, more content uh, on the 29th of this month and let me just double check and make sure that that is correct yeah 
Saturday the 29th of this month, uh, myself and Hey, it's BBG, uh, Soto, uh, big COD streamer and uh, massive modern player. Uh, we will be converging on Good Games Melbourne CBD uh, with Brian Holland, or Big W, uh, and Chani slash Primacat. And we will be playing uh, Command of the Gathering. That will be back on Diyoshi's channel, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Diyoshi TV? Yes. Diyoshi TV. Uh, and then on May 6th, back here on my channel, uh, we will be having Drafting Bad Live, Amon Cat Edition. Um, so we will actually be drafting a six-person, three-round tournament using Amon Cat only. Uh, so that's going to be real fun and exciting, and I've got lots of stuff to do. Uh, and I've, I've like, taken a week off work, and I've been working on this kind of stuff and PR stuff for the entire week. And it's now Thursday... Hey, look, it is Thursday. Ugh. It's just not enough time in the world, I'm afraid. Um, so that's it for me from today. Uh, I will be getting a case of Amonkhet. I really believe that this set is a lot of fun. Um, so come the 28th of this month, um, I will be here cracking boxes and boxes of the stuff leading up to uh, I'm Get Live and stuff like that. Plus I need a for Command of the Gathering, so I'm probably going to be sitting here for hours just shoveling cards into a box, just going, let's keep ripping it open until we get an invocation! Because um, I really want an invocation. Other than that, I think that that's pretty much it for me for now. Um, again, uh, what are we looking? 11 now. Uh, in approximately two and a half hours, come back and visit the channel, we'll be playing uh, Liliana vs Gideon Planeswalker decks. So that should be a lot of fun. We'll get to test out how strong those Planeswalkers really are, how easy they are to get into play and all that sort of stuff. Uh, maybe give you a bit of a back and forth on like how the decks actually feel. Um, because, again, you're probably mainly going to use them to either teach a new player how to play or use them in, in like league play. So that's definitely something that we're going to discuss. Other than that, that's it for me for Cheshire today, and uh, keep cracking packs, and I will talk to you all soon.